basically if you can see that listening subtest is the first subtest of your OED exam we have total time of around 40 minutes but depends upon the audio we may have the variety you know like in the exam we can have 30 to 45 minutes of audio there are total of three parts in part a there are two extract extract one and extract two so 12 12 question per extract we can expect over here right that is followed by part b uh, we have short workplace related extracts we have six six question uh, three option multiple choice type of question in part b and in part c it's the presentation extracts it's related to the academia or research oriented conversations mostly we have dialogue in the first extract and monologue in the second extract right so we can see there dialogue mean two people will be having conversation on any aspect of the healthcare mostly research oriented articles and monologue mean that there are three options uh, sorry there are well, there's only one person who will be speaking on any aspect of his research or any perspective of the study that he has conducted anyhow so after that, you can see, like say in part A, uh, the purpose of the part A is to assess your ability to extract the specific information. The plus point in, in part A is that you hear a recorded conversation and you just need to keep the track because there is no too little paraphrasing in part A. The challenge that you may face in the part A, the first and foremost is the speed. First of all, speed in terms of the way they are speaking, number one and speed in terms of the way you are writing. Because you need to listen at the same time and you need to write because there is no extra answer time being given to you at the end of the exam, uh, sorry, in part A. At the end of the exam, they will. The first challenge that you may encounter is to work on your speed. Most of the people, they just prefer to have the tips and techniques, you know, like you have a shortcut. But in listening part, you need to work on your speed uh, of understanding. Like if they are speaking at a bit high pace, still you will be able to comprehend what they are saying. And for that, there are a lot of resources such as GP Behind the Closed Door, uh, ABC All in the Mind. There are podcasts available. You can listen to them with high speed. It would be easy for you to grasp the information in the listening part. That is followed by the accent. Uh, there could be a variety of accents ranging from Australian, British, American, from New Zealand, Irish, Canadian, and South African, and so on. And even some non-native accent can be expected as a patient over there, like Chinese, Korean, and so on. Uh, intonation is the stress management or your active listening skills. At time, patients just have a drop in their voice or tone. So, you can have the active listening skills over there to test your active listening skills. So, this is your first part, like say in part A. You will be given, you know, like five minutes per extract, like say 10 minutes for the session because there will be two extracts. So, plus point is they will be giving you 30 second time to read this question like that. They will be giving you 30 second time to read this question. After that, they'll play the audio. So let's say if it's a physiotherapist and the sciatica is the problem, so we can anticipate the type of answer most of the in the most of the question. They'll, they'll play the audio. You have to listen to the audio and you need to write down the answer at the same time, right? There'll be no extra answer uh, time being given to you at the end of the session. Followed by the part B. In part B, they will assess your ability to understand the main idea, the gist, or the purpose of the short given uh, extract from different uh, healthcare related, you know, like uh, conversations such as patient handover, such as morning briefing, such as interview kind of scenario, such as presentation, and so on. There will be three options, multiple choice type of question will be given to you. The plus point about this part B is that you will be having uh, 15 second time to read each question. Just a minute, please. Just give me a moment. They will be assessing your ability to understand the gist of the information or the detail or the purpose of the given track. So you will be given 15 second time to read each question. So there are, uh, you can say, three options, multiple choice of a question. And at the end of this question, you'll be having five second time. So the, the, the plus point that you have 15 second time, first go and read the background statement. The background statement will lead you the background statement will lead you to the situation, like what the situation is, who's talking to who, and what is the setting, let's say. Followed by the main question, what does she warn her colleague about? Let's say the main thing is the warning. It's not mandatory that they would use the, love, uh, the word warning, but anyhow, 
it can be interpreted or you have to infer, let's say, how the things can be replaced, uh, how the warning word could be replaced. The patient is allergic to some type of antibiotics. Maybe you can see that it's mainly concerned about the antibiotics with reference to warning, with reference to warning, falling, and with reference to warning, breathless. So as we discuss in the multiple choice type of question, you have to go for the best one out. You need to go for the best one out, not the correct one out, right? So it's always the case that you need to go and understand the best one in the uh, multiple choice of a question, right? So basically, you have to see that there's a possibility that they will speak all the options. The possibility, they will speak all the option, but as we have to select the best one out, let's say if the option A is in the conversation, but that might not be the answer to the question, that is not the warning. Let's say if the answer B is in the conversation, but it's not the exact match rather than using must, they have used may. Again, it's the partial match. And let's say if answer C is the answer, so they will highly paraphrase this statement. So this is something, when you listen some words, such as in the conversation, if they use prevent or following, be careful to eliminate this thing first rather than to select it. The common mistake can they do when they listen some same word like care, like prevent, like following, they just meant, just uh, select this as an answer without understanding either it's the answer to the question or without trying to eliminate it out. So I'm just going to suggest your way with you that when you listen to any of the word or phrase or part of the phrase in the conversation, try your level best to omit it first rather than to select it first. It's a minor thing, a technical mind play that you have to develop. Anyhow, in part B, there are six questions. The plus point with, with each question, you'll be having... Five second time at the end of the time to share your answers, right? Anyhow, followed by the part C. Now, in part C, there are semi academia related healthcare topics, uh, you know, research oriented or academia, academia vocabulary they will be using. In comparison to part B, it's difficult, you know, like more because of the language set they will be using, because of the high level of paraphrasing. They will gonna assess your deep understanding of the listening to understand the purpose, because most of the time, the answer might not be directly mentioned in the text. So what I like to suggest you one thing that, you know, like unlike any other exam, where we focus on the keywords. So in here, the keywords can help you to drive you toward the location, but keyword uh, would not help you to select the right answer. As we were discussing with you. Yes. So basically I was discussing with you in part C, you know, like uh, first of all, there will be two extracts. They are healthcare related, research oriented discussions. Mostly the first one is a dialogue and the second one is a monologue, but not necessary that we can have dialogue. The first one, we can have monologue as well in the first conversation. The point to ponder that I was making, you know, like in the conversation earlier that, you know, like they just use the same word or the keywords in the uh, conversation and the same keywords being seen in your, uh, we can say the, the option, but I would like you to suggest you do not select your answer just being driven by the keywords. Do not get influenced by the keywords. The keyword might help you to track the conversation. But let's what I'm trying to say to you, for example, if you can see that these are the options, why does Dr. Opson regard Shagas as neglected disease? So we need to find the reason of neglection. The main concern is why this is a neglected disease. Not only the word neglected, but the reason of neglection is the main concern. Right? Anyhow, so there's a possibility that in the conversation, they might not use the word neglected. The word neglected will be paraphrase, right? Or they just, uh, you know, like uh, paraphrase this word or they just uh, rephrase this word in this way that we might not be able to understand because of that level of difficulty. But they might not use the word neglected. Let's say because of the social group, we have the keyword because the patient often don't realize that they're infected, maybe a keyword impact and small may be a keyword. So when you listen to the conversation, let's say if your answer is A, you can see that if they use the word like patient often don't realize. When you listen that word in the conversation, before you can select the answer, listen it carefully, more focused. Make a match. Okay, if it's for the match, but it's, it's either it's a reason of neglection, if it's not a reason of like neglection or if it's not a match, just put a cross over here. Then, Listen to the conversation. Let's say if they move on toward the C, they just speak about that option as well. 
and if they're talking about the impact was it the reason of neglection or was it a match or not so listen carefully when you when you believe that they're talking about any option because this is the time when you have to omit or select the answer if your answer is a it will be highly paraphrased they even don't use the word social group because if you'll be inclined toward the social group so if you're inclined toward the infected uh, right right so these are those words that might distract you you know like when you are selecting your answer that might distract you when you are selecting your answer okay so basically the point of uh, the ponder that i want to highlight the point over here is that do not select your answer after being inferred with the help of keywords just select your answer uh, on the basis of the theme the central idea because keyword might guide you that where you are in the text but keyword might at the same time distract you to select the wrong answer because mostly whenever whatever we have seen that the mistakes are common yeah we can mistakes are common but right? say if this is i let's this is the question in my 7 year of oet career i have seen that whenever we play this question everybody go for option b that is wrong right option a is the right answer but why it's like everybody select this answer the point is that they use the same statement because patient often don't realize they are this is the same matching statement first of all it's not the reason of neglection when you listen to the conversation you would have an idea not today anyhow so and even they use the word bitten over here not infected so basically what i'm trying to suggest you that when you listen to the same kind of, uh, statement be more focused rather than selecting it rather than rushing toward it be more focused and try to eliminate it how i can eliminate okay i can eliminate it because the right now the conversation is about the uh, they are discussing about the definition of the disease or the background of the disease right now they have nothing they have not discussed anything about the neglection so keep that idea in the mind it should be integrated to the question and even though the infected was replaced with the the word called as infected was replaced with the they've changed the word bitten so in that regard you can eliminate the answer so part c and b need your attention right you need attention right anyhow so if it's clear to all of you i would like to move on toward the practice but before that you can see there that these have there, there are some uh, guideline to write down the answer do not make it a messy because this is your question paper this is your answer sheet right there is no negative marking you will be given two minutes time at the end of the session and you have to shade your answer like that right remember there is no excel answer sheet being given these are frequently asked question that we can see over here we can quickly review them we have 42 question 24 in part a 6 in part b and 12 in part c normally we have variety of accent such as as i discussed these are the accent uh you know like we have not been given any extra answer sheet this is the question paper you need to write down the answer and you need to share the bubbles there is no penalty for spelling mistake you just write it down pneumonia the way it has been written over here however the actual spelling is this so you will not be get a penalty as long as you are phonetically correct right so first of all do write it down yeah we will share the answer in part b and c do write it down whatever you listen do not write it down the information that is not being there and do not change they are not checking checking your understanding but they are checking your listening what i mean to say if they use word let's say palpitation and you are using heart racing or if they use the word heart racing in conversation in part a and you are writing palpitation it would be wrong you need to write it down whatever you listen right is it clear and do not add something abbreviation as long as they are standard throughout the healthcare we can add it down the standard abbreviation right okay so it's important for you to understand that you have to write it down uh you know like the information that you exactly hear and as i've discussed earlier if you add something or if you contradict something from the information that is being in the conversation it will be a negative impact on your marks and you will lose the marks although grading is relative but in order to pass your exam you should get 32 plus or 30 plus correct so in regard to absolute grading if you get 30 score so just to have a simple mathematics so each carry, question carries 11.9 marks so multiply it you can get your score so but still target your level uh, best that you can get 32 plus correct in listening as well right so now i would like to move on toward the